Good morning, Light Lions. I hope all of you had a wonderful week. I hope all of you are still safe and haven't been sick. Um, things are looking to be better. I mean, they're still kind of hectic, but, you know, we will get there. All right. So let's stay strong and, you know, keep going forward as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and get today started. Let's close our eyes, bow our heads, put our hands together, and I'll pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for just every moment, every breath, and every new day that you give to us, Lord. Um, I hope that we don't squander it, that we don't take it for granted, that we live each day purposefully and just driven towards glorifying you and worshiping you, Lord. Um, the world is still in chaos, but Lord, we know that in your hands um, that chaos can be controlled and things can be made better, Lord. So please be with us, guide us, and just be with the world, Lord, and heal the world as you can, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, so we are going to continue our series about people meeting Jesus, all right? So today we're going to learn about the young rich man. So when we think about a rich young man, we, we think of something like this, right? Guy wearing a nice suit, he has a nice car, you know, he has a nice watch and, you know, a bunch of money and credit cards, whatever. Now, back in the day, um, Jesus actually had met a young rich man. He was, um, you know, the son of a very wealthy person, and he also made a lot of money on his own. So, we're going to go to the book of Matthew, and in chapter 19, it goes, Someone came to Jesus with this question, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? So Jesus' response was, why ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man asked. And Jesus replied, you must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. So what Jesus is replying to is the Ten Commandments, right? The original rules that God gave to Moses and, you know, all of the Israelites were supposed to follow. So it goes on. I've obeyed all these commandments, the young man replied. What else must I do? Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven then come follow me. Now, if you notice in verse 20, I wrote Mark, right? In parentheses right here. The reason why I wrote that is because in the book of Mark, when this young man says, I've obeyed all these commandments, it says in Mark that Jesus looked to the young man lovingly, meaning Jesus was very proud of the young man. He was very happy with everything that the young man had done because Jesus knew that this young man was a good young man. He was a good person. Now, he goes on because he knows that there is one thing that this young man cannot do. So he, you know, we're going to continue. And it says, verse 22, But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is very hard for a rich person to enter, enter the kingdom of heaven. So this rich person had all these things, right? It's almost like a big wheelbarrow, right? A lot of weight in wealth, okay? Now, when we're talking about heaven, right, we talk about, you know, we have to die physically before we can enter heaven spiritually, now, if you die physically, how are you going to carry all that money with you? You kind of can't, right? Because you don't have physical hands. You got spirit hands. So you can't really touch anything. So Jesus continues, I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? They asked. So with this example, right, Jesus is saying a camel has an easier time of going through the eye of a needle. Now, this obviously isn't to scale. 
And if we wanted it to be to scale, and you know, the needle compared to a camel would be like that, right? And in that little line, there's a tiny dot. And that's what the camel would have to fit through. That's what Jesus is saying. It's so impossible that it would be easier for this camel to pass through a needle than it would be for a rich man to enter heaven. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Then Peter said to him, we've given up everything to follow you. What will we get? Jesus replied, I assure you that when the world is made new and the Son of Man sits upon his glorious throne, you who have been my followers will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. But many who are the greatest now will be least important then, and those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. So let's kind of go back. Now, in this verse, there's something very important that we need to discuss. Okay, So in verse 26, Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but with God, everything is possible. So what God is trying to say to the disciples and not only to the disciples but to us is we rely so much on you know our knowledge like our our smarts we rely so much on what we see what we feel things like that but with all of that you can't enter the kingdom of heaven that's what god or that's what jesus is trying to say to the people around him and with that young man the rich one The reason why it's hard for him to enter the kingdom of heaven is because he's holding on to his wealth. He's holding on to the earth. And that's because he believes that his money gives him power. But the fact is that power is very limited because money isn't going to turn, you know, lead into gold. That money is not going to bring the dead back to life, right? What it's going to do is actually weigh your spirit down because you're putting more priority on money than you are on God himself, right? And so that's why Jesus had to say this because he's saying, let go of the earth, let go of the world, let go of what you know and follow me. Because if you learn the things I know, if you do the things I do, guess what? You're no longer living in what's only possible in the earth, but you're doing everything anything that's possible to the imagination because God is capable of anything. And then towards the end, right, Jesus talks about what it means to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? He says, but many who are the greatest now will be least important then, and those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. So what he's talking about is this right here. Someone who's willing to be a servant. Now, this is Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, right? And, you know, a lot of the historians, when they look at this, they think, oh, well, that's not how a king is supposed to be. And it's true. When Jesus was doing this, he said that I am serving you or I am serving the people because that is who he's meant to be. And Jesus led by example. He was the greatest servant, right? He did things for other people without expecting them to pay him. He went around spreading the good news that, you know, God is coming back. But most importantly, he wanted to make sure that people understood that it's not about you being the most important person or being the richest person or having, you know, the most things. That's not what God cares about. What God cares about is, are you willing to let go of the most so that you could be the most in heaven, right? You got to let go of this world and do what God wants you to do so that you could be higher in heaven. And that's why the apostles who, you know, just like the verse said, 
they threw away everything to follow Jesus. They let go of their nice paying jobs. They let go of their families, everything, just so that they could be one step closer to God through Jesus. So in this story, we, we learn that, you know, wealth doesn't get you into heaven. And, you know, holding on to our worldly possessions or objects they also won't get you into heaven. What really gets you into heaven is you believing in Jesus and following the things that Jesus tells us to do. All right, so that's it for today. All right, thank you guys for listening and paying attention. I hope you guys stay safe and, you know, just do your best in school. I know it's tough because they're giving a lot of homework, but just try and keep up as best you can, all right? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pray and I'll close this out. So let's go ahead, close our eyes, bow our heads, put our hands together. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for just teaching us about the young man, just teaching us about letting go of the world so that we could follow you, Lord. Um, it is one of the hardest decisions that we can make as human beings, but we know that there are those who have done it before and that we can follow suit and learn from them and, Lord, you provide ultimately, so let us not be afraid. Let us be courageous and let us be loving, Lord. Thank you for just giving us the opportunity to learn more about you and to become closer to you, Lord. I ask that you be with the children, be with the families, be with the world. Protect them, heal them, guide them, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. I miss you guys. Um, so um, hopefully I'll get to see you guys soon. Be safe and just try and have fun as much as, much as you can, all right? All right, bye.